Cybersecurity is not always all that it's cut out to be. People on social media, on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, all over social media love to only show you one reality of cybersecurity. In this video, I'm going to be covering four untold truths about cybersecurity. Let's get right into it. What is up guys, welcome and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Day, and on this channel, I talk about cybersecurity. In this video, I'm going to be covering four major untold truths about cybersecurity. So let's get into it. The first thing is the continuous learning. So a lot of people have this notion that, you know, get this certification or learn this tool or learn this skill or do this and you're going to be able to get into cybersecurity industry. But the learning doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop at that certification. Matter of fact, the learning starts when you get into cybersecurity. Because you're going to be learning new tools, you're going to be learning new skills, you're going to be learning new certifications if you have to for your job. You're going to be learning new frameworks, you're going to be learning new cloud providers. You're going to be learning new exploits as they come out every single day. You're going to be learning new mitigation techniques, new detection techniques, new analysis techniques, new industry standards. So you're going to be learning a lot more if you're in the security field, when you get into the security field, more than you were before you got into the field. And people usually have the notion of just, you know, just get this certification or just get this degree and you're able to, you're going to be able to get into the field, which is usually not true, which leads me to my second point. There is no perfect path. There is no defined pathway to break into cybersecurity, in, into the cybersecurity industry. Um, it's not easy to get into. There's no particular certification or degree or bootcamp or, um, platform that's going to help you get into cybersecurity. It's a combination of several things, a combination of skill, experience, and if the interviewer likes you, there's so many things that come together to eventually help you get maybe your first cybersecurity job or whatever cybersecurity job you want to get into. So there's no perfect path. There's no particular college degree that is best for cybersecurity or certification or internships. Of course, there are some certain things that tip the skill. Uh, there's certain, certain things that definitely give you better chances, but there's no certain like internship or boot camp or apprenticeship or stuff like that that, if, that is certainly that is going to definitely get you to cybersecurity. It's a combination of different things of, of your skill, maybe your experience, maybe your education combined with your certifications. Like so many things have to come together. Maybe your network, maybe the interviewer likes you, maybe the team really likes you, maybe you have a really, really a really, really obvious and really strong burning desire and passion that is so visible that makes you so appealing to whoever wants to hire you. Or maybe you just have like a really, really nice specialized set of background that makes you, you know, really attractive for the role. There is no perfect path. There's several things that constitute that constitute you break into cybersecurity or you maybe get in a cybersecurity job. And there's like, you, you're not always going to get into cybersecurity directly. There are, there are different ways people get into cybersecurity. There are like feeder, feeder roles like IT support, network engineer, sys administra system administrator. So there is no perfect path. It's always about defining your own path, your own journey. Different people have taken different paths and you can definitely learn different things from them. You can pick something from this person, from that person and kind of create your own path on how you're going to bring your cybersecurity. So that's another untold truth about cybersecurity. And the third untold truth about cybersecurity is your first job might not be what you expect or might not pay you what you want, might not pay you what you expect. So back to like some of the points I mentioned before, there's like this false notion that if you have this certification, if you have the CISSP or the OSCP or the Security Plus, you're going to immediately start making 100K in cybersecurity. This is not always true. Of course, there are exceptions to the case, but you have to most times earn six-figure salaries or higher salaries, right? My first internship was right about minimum wage. My first full-time job in cybersecurity was a little lower than the average market rate for the role. So you're not always going to get paid or always going to get the job you want or always going to get the salary that you want, especially when it starts, when it's finished, when you're just starting off, right? There's going to be different things. You might end up not getting into cybersecurity. You might end up maybe as a network engineer or a system administrator or in IT support, which is not bad. It's just about you, uh, you know, figuring out a plan to transition into cybersecurity eventually. But people should not always have the 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 premonition that 
you know, cybersecurity is going to be very easy to get into. You're always, you're going to, once you get a certification, you're going to land a six figure job. That's not always going to happen, right? The average rate for most entry level cybersecurity jobs is really 50K to 60K. But there's articles and studies out there that tell you that cybersecurity professionals make 90K on average. Yes, there are people who make 90K on average with little to no experience with just college degrees. But it's not, you know, it's not popular as much. It's it's people who have maybe specific specialized skills or um, maybe specific, come from specific colleges. It's not impossible, but it's not always the case. So having that, um, like setting your expectations too high, starting off might leave you disappointed, which is another untold truth about cybersecurity. Like getting the security post will make you 100K or getting the OSCP or CISSP will get you 100K. Those certifications some of them require experience and the more experience you have the more skills you have the more you're any capability but in terms of breaking the cybersecurity, in terms of entry-level roles you're not always going to land six-figure jobs right off the bat or high-paying jobs sometimes you kind of have to build your way up to up to those high-paying jobs and it's not to say it's not impossible but it's not always the case and the, the the more skills and the more experience you have the more your earning potential so definitely keep that in mind and then the last and final untold truth about cybersecurity is work-life balance and burnout. So people love to sell this amazing work culture in cybersecurity where you get the opportunity to hack into things for a living. You get to break into systems, break into organizations, break into buildings, you know, and all of that fun stuff. Like, it's great. It's great. You get, to, you get paid to hack for a living or you get paid to catch hackers for a living or to trap hackers for a living. You get paid to do this really, really cool sci-fi movie type of thing. But it's not always all that's cut out to be. There's If you're on the defensive side, like a security analyst or suck analyst, there's alert fatigue where you're, 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 you're going to get constantly tired of triaging the same alerts over and over again or uh, just to, due to the sheer volume of alerts. There are days where alerts are just flooding in like crazy. And you're going to have to triage those alerts and you eventually get fatigued by that. That leads to burnout. There's also on other areas of cybersecurity where you're constantly repeating tasks or you're just there's just so much to do that you get burnt out. There's sometimes you have to work overtime. Maybe you're dealing with a security breach or maybe you're trying to work on an implementation that you're just trying to figure out or the company is just trying to onboard a new tool or something. And you have to you're going to have to work overtime maybe against against what you originally desired. You're gonna be having to work longer hours, or you know, work on weekends, or be on call. Like people in people who work in in, in the SOC, maybe senior senior analysts might have to be on call for night shift. So if a junior analyst runs into a problem, they're gonna call you in the middle of the night because they can't seem to be able to triage this alert. Right? That is another thing people don't talk about. There's understaffing. Cybersecurity is a field where we claim to have a negative uh, unemployment rate, but there, sometimes teams are understaffed because they're unable to find a talent or there's just not enough. There's there's just not people that uh, employers deem qualified for roles. So you might have a team where you're understaffed. Everybody's bun burnt out from, you know, having so much work to do, but so many few hands. It is also the issue of maybe having lazy co-workers, right? You might be hardworking. You might be dedicated to your job. You might be super focused and dedicated and really passionate, but not, not everyone on your team is going to be like that, right? And you're going to have to deal with those people. Those people might be pulling the team down, might be killing the morale and stuff like that. So there's that work-life balance. There's burnouts. There's um so many things that contribute to the entirety of the career experience in cybersecurity. And these are um not meant to deter people from getting cybersecurity but it's just to put out a f a more uh a more uh uh true reality of what cybersecurity really is beyond just the glamorous lifestyle of breaking into things uh breaking into things for ha for a living hacking for a living catching hackers for a living there's a lot more to it and it's important for people to understand what they're getting into especially when they're getting into the cybersecurity field so once again this is not a deterrent this is just to show you a true reality of what you should potentially expect if you're breaking into cybersecurity i have more videos where i talk about more positive things about cybersecurity while breaking cybersecurity in my channel so definitely check those out um, I usually have my videos on a more positive note, but once again, this was supposed to give you a more, uh, true sense of reality. With that said, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please be sure to smash like button. And if you're new to subscribe, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 10k subscribers 
before my birthday next month. So I would appreciate if you guys like the video, subscribe, share the video, leave a comment, do everything for the YouTube algorithm. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.